Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hayes Long. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today we'll be working on this Procreate tutorial which is a modern illustration where we will be focusing more on the line work and the sketch instead of the colouring. So majority of our work will be done during the sketch and the line work itself and also I would like to give a special shout out to Carolina who actually helped to sponsor this video partially. So thank you so much and I hope you guys enjoy this video because I know everyone has been asking about the layers, the brush settings, the canvas settings, every damn thing. So in this tutorial, I actually made it specially long and detailed so that you have every information that you need and that you can nitpick and pause and watch over and over again. So before I proceed, I would like to say thank you to Pen Dot Tips for sending me the silicone tips for the Apple Pencil. If you are afraid of your Apple Pencil getting premature wear and tear on the tip as it will get less and less sharp over the years, so you can always get this silicone tip and then just put it onto your um, Apple tip for protection. And the reason why I chose the grey silicone tip is because I do not want any other colours reflecting on my screen and white would just look like my original Apple Pencil. So grey is the best way to go, I think. It's a bit neutral and it's good for artists as well. So be sure to check that out at pen.tips. And now, remember to like and subscribe and also comment if you have any questions. Now, drum roll, we are going to start the tutorial. Let's get started! Okay, to start, we're going to do the project setup. To do that, I'm just going to create a new canvas in A4 size by default setting. And this is usually the setting that I use. Once it's done, I'm going to go into my actions tab and insert a photo, load my reference picture, and then tap on fit to screen to automatically resize the picture to the screen. Load the layers panel and then rename this layer as reference. If you are a beginner, you can choose to trace the picture. So just create a new layer and call it sketch. Turn down the opacity for the reference layer and select the sketch layer to begin sketching. For the color, I'm going to choose something bright like blue. And then the brush that we're going to use is the sketch brush. And then we're just going to sketch the entire face. When you are sketching the face, remember to include the shadow shapes as well, such as these. Also remember to use a brush size that is appropriate. Don't use a brush size that is very very big or you won't be able to see where you're going to paint later on when you're colouring. Also notice that I'm usually sketching the shadow shapes instead of the shape of the feature which is actually the brow. Remember to sketch the shape of the highlights as well. Think of sketching light and shadow shapes when you're doing this. For those of you who are advanced enough, you don't need to trace, so you can just launch the Photos app and launch the photo and then drag Procreate to the right side as a multitasking panel and then after that, just have one layer and sketch the photo. But, but, but today, we're going to explore an intermediate option. For this, make sure your reference layer are set to about half and then sandwich a grid layer between the sketch and reference layer. Now you can have multiple grid layers, so I have a blue grid layer and now I'm going to create a new layer and have some red sketch on top of it. Now you can have more than two grid layers, you can have many grid layers in all different colors so that you can change the size or adjust each of the layers as you want to. When you are done, remember to merge all the grid layers down and then you can set the opacity lower for your next sketch to follow. Okay, back to the grid. We are actually going to use the original reference and trace the grid on the reference. Start with a circle and enlarge it to encompass the top of the head until the nose at the bottom. Then sketch the sides of the face. And then draw a line at the bottom of your eyes, across and also at the brows. Finish with a straight line down the center and let Procreate straighten it out for you. And then after that, you can drop in the shape of the jawline. Then add a pair of diagonal lines from the tip of your nose across the ends of your eyes. So once the head is done on a new layer, we're going to drop in the neck. Draw it from the top of the temples down and make it a cylinder at the bottom. For the torso, start a new layer. Measure the size of the circle of the head and then use this circle to draw the torso. Move the torso circle up to the head so you can see with the size difference. It should be the same size right now. And then now enlarge it slightly. Change your transform to free form and then drag the top so that it becomes like an egg. It should be slightly longer than your entire face. Now move it back down and fit it to her ribcage. 
Sketch the rib cage out and add the center line down. Draw a straight line across for the collarbone and then uh, make an inverted triangle with that. Then you can drop in the shoulders. Draw a line across for the center of the breast and then two curves down to show where the nipples will end up. A circle in the neck and then three C curves just like this. Add in the collarbone curves. For the breast, add a curve in the center and then draw the shape of the breast like this. You can continue to add definition to the ribcage if you want to. And if you notice here, you can see that my torso and my neck is actually already slimmer and smaller than the original photo. So this actually makes the portrait a lot more youthful. After that, I'm going to hide the torso layer. Then in the new layer, I'm going to sketch the hands. For the palms, make sure that you are sketching like a rectangular box. And then include more tiny rectangular boxes for all the fingers. Repeat the same thing for the other hand. And now we need to place our hands onto the smaller torso. So by resizing or moving them around. I also use the free hand select tool to select each hand and make sure that they are rotated so that they can still hold the straw straightly and also that the top hand overlaps the chin slightly. You can already see that it's looking very different from the proportions of the original portrait. Now after we merge all the grid layers, we can turn down the opacity to about half and then we can sketch on the sketch layer. Using the existing grid for the help of your proportions, you can sketch your portrait over this. You can use these vertical lines to see where your mouth should end and how wide it should be. Don't be afraid to transform the features such as the nose if it's too big or too small. You can also drop these diagonal lines to help you see where the nose ends and where the mouth ends and see and check if they are correct. If you need more information, you can watch my video on facial anatomy. As this is just a preliminary sketch, don't be afraid to do extra shadings for shadows or any information that you need. Most of us tend to see lines in straight lines, so when it comes to doing hands and fingers and also the face, make sure you try and incorporate as many curves as possible into your drawing. In fact, you will start from a better place if you learn how to exaggerate curves even though you can't really see them. Once the main body is done, I'm going to do a new sketch layer and use Ray to sketch in accessories. On the same layer, I'm going to sketch the cup and the straw as well. Because we mess around with the position of the hands, the straw might have to be slanted but I think I need to fix it to become straight later on. And now I create a new layer so that I can sketch and trace some of the hair from the original photo. Then using this sketch as a grid layer, I create another new layer which will be my sketch and then I draw my hair over it. For the updated layers information, you can look at the sidebar. You know, I can only teach you how to use Procreate and then manipulate the tools to create the artwork that you want. But if you want your artwork to look good and to improve your own sketching, you still have to depend on your own experience and how often you practice and things like that. Until now, I've only been using one brush which is the sketch brush. Don't forget you can always tilt your pencil to do the shading like this because the left side is lots less dense compared to the right side. I'm adding more shading and seeing how I can make the left side a lot fuller. But regardless of whether you're using the tracing method or the intermediate method or the advanced method, you will end up having something like this. And now we can finally proceed to the actual line work. Your layers must be in a mess right now, so make sure you merge all the sketch layers into one and merge all the grid layers into one. Then I actually delete away my grid layer and then I just create a new layer on top of the sketch layer called line work. So now I will turn down the opacity of the sketch layer so that I can refer to it on my line work layer. I use a dark blue and I use the same sketch brush. If you want a brush that's stiffer, you can use the inking brush called the flat pen. It's default in Procreate. You can find it there. Now, if you want to create these kind of artwork in Procreate, you have to accept that this part of the process is going to be the longest ever for this artwork. So you're going to have to spend a lot of time getting the lines to be nice and smooth and also to get them where you want them to be. 
But there are a few tips in this process. So the first tip is to use your Apple Pencils pressure to get thin and thick lines. If you press harder, you can get thicker lines. And if you press lighter, you get thinner lines. So you can use this to suggest like shadows or to suggest like the feature is very, very delicate. So use this effectively. You can also make use of Procreate's engine to auto smooth your curve. So draw the curve and hold it and wait for Procreate to smooth your curves. But don't expect to get it right the first time you'll probably have to undo like four or five times to get it right in fact i think i probably undo like 20 times in like five seconds all the time when i'm doing this and the second thing is about connection so the lines if you intend to connect them then connect them and if you intend to not connect them then disconnect them but don't be lazy and have some disconnected or connected because you're just like breezing and rushing through things because when you do this it will show up messy and chaotic and you need to have your artwork represent your initial intention and the next tip that I can say is you need to learn how to draw a straight line but somehow make it curvy and suggest shadows and details so the reason why I'm saying this is because a straight line that has the same thickness and the same um, quality would look very very stiff so you need to somehow suggest that it is curvy even though it's straight it's contradicting but you will see it happen a lot here as I am drawing this you can see how I'm trying my best to keep this straight line as curvy as possible with different different qualities in like the thickness and the flow of it so try and apply this tip to your own sketch also if you notice here I tend to have thick outlines and then very very thin and faded outlines within a subject matter for shading or for any details that are necessary like if you look at the center of the cup the waffle shapes are all very very thin lines but most important of all you need to be very patient you can see my left hand is constantly undoing when I'm doing this line work for the hair, it's actually a very very good opportunity for you to use Procreate's auto smoothing feature. Um, for all the C curves, it's really really good. But if you're doing S curve, Procreate does not support that. You will change that into a straight line instead. So you need to separate that into two curves. I feel this is still like the best way to get organic and free flowing curves in Procreate. I also like to create a very very bold and take outline for the entire mess of a focus of attention like the entire body and the hair itself will have a very very thick outline you can also put thicker outlines around like accessories or your face or certain things that you want to pop but if you put thick outlines for everything and everything pops means nothing is popping Yay, finally the line work is done. So now we're going to create a new layer between the line work and the sketch called color. So actually I created the background already and my layer is actually in a mess. I actually re-recorded the layer process for you guys. So, but the process is the same. Um, just create the color layer beneath the line work layer. Here I'm using white color to fill in the sketch. But you can use whatever color you want, just make sure to cleanly color in the sketch. So in your layers, you should have something like this now, a line work, a sketch layer and also the color layer. You can already turn off the sketch layer if you do not want to see it anymore. Now for this next step, we will only be working in the color layer. You do not need to create any more new layers other than a color layer until the next step of the process. Now we're going to do something called color blocking. So we're going to pick a few colors and fill in some of the elements like this. Okay, if you see here, the reds are my clothes and then the yellows are the accessories and the cups and the sleeves. And also blue is my hair and then white is my skin. So this will make it easier for us to select what we want to paint later on. Now look here carefully, I'm going to pick the selection tool and tap on the blue parts. Don't forget all the other blue parts that are at the bottom or the tiny tiny little bits, you have to select those two. Tap on those and then we're going to tap on save and load and this will actually um, save this as a selection. Repeat the same thing for every color. So now I'm selecting everything that's in red which is the clothes. I'm tapping every single red bit and then after that I will just add it to the save and load selection by tapping on plus. Repeat this for every other color. However, do bear in mind that this will only work under automatic selection mode. 
So when you're done, you will see that in your layers, your color layer will have all these many many colors inside. And then if you have done just now the selection thing properly, if you tap on save and load, you can actually hit any of the selection and it will automatically select those areas for you. Also make sure that your alpha lock is turned on for your color layer. So the first thing you want to do is to coordinate all the colors that we'll be using for this piece. So I am selecting the nail selection and I'm using the painting brush and I'm picking a pink color for the nails. Then I paint over the entire nails and I move on to the next selection which is the clothes and I'm picking a darker pink and then I'm just painting it on. Now let's move on to the skin selection and for the skin selection, I'm launching my easy color palette and I'm just picking a closest skin tone color that I think is correct and paint it on first. I'm not worried so much about like if they're dark or vibrant enough. I'm just like putting things on quickly right now. Moving on to the hair selection, I am trying to test a couple of colors and see which one I like better. I couldn't find any I like so I launched the Hue Saturation Brightness tool under layers and I'm just pushing the sliders around trying to change the color maybe make it a little bit more saturated and a bit darker and see if I can get something that I like For the accessories, you can selectively paint each one a different color if you like but mainly this method is for you to quickly try colors and try how dark and how saturated you want them to be and then to get something that you really like you can take your time to experiment with the colors and you can always use the hue, saturation and brightness tool to individually adjust the colors of certain sections. For me, I realized that I needed another layer of the hair low light and it looks something like this. So this actually resides in another layer. By now, you should be really comfortable picking selections. So let's pick the clothes selection and pick a darker pink for the shadows and the shading. And here are the brushes that I use for this process. Just the airbrush or the painting brush or the sketching brush for coloring. If you want a soft edge, use the airbrush. And then for the smudge brush, you can load it this way. Make sure to use the flat brush smudge for this process. For the highlights, we'll actually be using a Procreate brush. So go to the Textures brush set and pick Tarkin. For the colouring, it's actually really simple. We're just going to pick one shadow and one highlight for most of the items on the portrait. For the cup, you can see the original photo is really complicated. So for an illustrative approach, we need to reduce the amount of values. So let's just stick with one shadow and one highlight for now. Using Tarkin, I'm putting a side gradient of a skin tone and then the shadow color in the center. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is all happening on the same layer, the color layer. I'm just painting in the shadows again with the same color using a sketch brush. Now I want to show you how I add in color without creating more complexity. So the idea is to pick a color that is exactly exactly the same value as the current shadow color. So now if I tap on the color palette, you can see the current swatch is on the left swatch. So now I'm going to tap on the right swatch and I want a pinker color instead of brown color but I want it in the exact same value. So I'm going to try sliding around and try and find a pink color first that is around the same value. If I think that I gotten the color, I'm going to try and paint it on the shadow. I can see here it's clearly darker so I need to adjust it more. So I'll show you how it looks like when it's correct. You see when it's correct, the colors seem to vibrate with each other because it's the exact same value. And if you use this color to paint on the shadow um, areas, you'll find that you're not adding any complexity to the image itself, but you're actually adding some subtle variations of colors without changing the values. For the highlights, it's going to be a very subtle grey that is very very close to the base colour. I picked the colour out the same way that I picked out the pink for the shadow just now. Here I'm using the classic white that I share in the sidebar for all the main 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 highlights in another layer. Okay, now take a look at the layers. The shading of the cup is currently in this layer. And now this white that I'm painting is actually on the highlights layer. Now I'm going to show you what happens if I add another value which is a darker shadow. So while this will actually pull a lot of contrast and focus towards the cup but this is not my intention. My intention is to pull the focus towards her face. So even after I've painted this layer, I've decided not to use it. 
the most difficult thing to paint is ready over the cup is done now we're gonna move on to something really simple which is just putting highlights on the nails all the other accessories are really simple they just get a base a shadow and a highlight kind of treatment keep your colors and shading very very simple and straightforward once you're done we can move on to the face and use the colors on the sidebar to shade the face use the airbrush and test the size make sure it's big enough before you continue shade around the forehead down the ears shade around the eye sockets on the outer and inner side now shade between the eyes and down the nose now change to a bigger brush size and shade the cheeks now shade the under eye bags and then flare out from the shading of the nose for the second round of shading, I'm using a slightly darker tone and just reshading the eyes with the sketch brush. But for large areas, you should still use the airbrush so that you can have a softer blend. Slowly shade darker around the edges of the face and the neck. Then we're gonna move on to the smudge tool and then we're gonna smudge the hard edges out. Try to have a light touch when you are smudging and then after that, we will pick a pink color. I'm gonna change to the saturation brush and then paint over the cheeks to shade it a pink color but bear in mind that you can only do this once you have finished doing all the shadows for the face for the lips pick the pink from the cheeks and then paint it down as a base first and then slowly add in more pinks from the easy skin tone palette or from the coats in the sidebar then drop in the highlights and then gradually make the reds more and more red lastly put in the highlights with the same white color for the eyes, first paint it light grey for both. Then using the automatic selection tool, select them. You can slide it left or right while you're still selecting. Then use the airbrush to shade the corners of the eyes and also the top of the eyes because the shadow will fall from the um, eyelashes. After that, you can disable the selection and then paint on the colors of the iris. For the lashes, I decided to do a stylistic ombre instead of the usual um, hairs and also for the lower lashes as well. For the brows, I wanted to resemble more of the original photo so I wanted a very very light grey gradient going towards a darker brown in the inner corners. I'm just scribbling down the tones using my sketch brush before I load my smudge brush and smudge everything together. After smudging, I would use a sketch brush again to draw some hairs and see how I can add more detail but I try to keep it very very simple. Then I just drop in the highlights for the eyes. I really didn't want to use anything that is darker than the outline itself. After debating in my head, I decided to add a darker black in the center of the eyes. Because I did that, I need to go back to my outline layer which is the line work layer and I am colouring and changing the colours of the line work around the eyes to be this same black. I also decided to shade the iris a little bit more to make it a little bit more detailed. Usually when I'm done with the eyes, I will drop in all the highlights for the tear ducts and also the lower lash line. For the highlights and some shadows, I'm using the Tarkin brush to put in some of the lines that I really really like. The reason why I've chosen this brush is because this is a digital artwork and most of the colors are very flat so I wanted to add some intricacy to the flat colors and by adding texture this is a great way to add um, complexity without over complicating things. The strongest highlights goes last which is on the nose and I'm just taking my time to sketch the highlights and then after that I'll blend it out and drop a final strong highlight in the center of the nose. Now I'm going to work on the hands and keep things very simple. So I'm just using the sketch brush to quickly block in all the shadows and then I'll use the smudge brush to push things around. I'm not going to over shade the hands again and now I'm just changing to the Tarkin brush to add in highlights for the hands. Then I'll go in with my sketch brush and draw some wrinkles and clean things up a bit gives a little bit of hard edge here and there and also paint in the highlights so the highlights I usually just sketch it down and then use a smudge brush to smudge them away so majority of the values in this painting are all on the face and for everywhere else it's just really really minimalistic so this would draw the focus to the face more than the fingers or the accessories but I wanted this kind of painting to be the kind where you zoom in and you can see details even though you are not expecting any. So the texture from the Tarkin brush is a great way to achieve this. So even though it may look flat but actually there's a lot of little details going around, especially the finishing touches around the edges. 
for the hair, I'm going to pick the other shadow color from the hair and then I'm going to shade the top of the head a little bit. Then I will use a smudge tool to pull it towards the knot so that it will form like hair lines. Now it's time to drop in a darker brown and I'm just blocking in the color so that I can have a few shapes ready. I basically switch back and forth between these three colors and try and shade the entire hair with it. I'm also constantly switching between brush and smudge to blend and paint at the same time. I'm not actually trying to paint hairs here so because they're already stylized. So I'm actually imagining like cylinder shapes or paper turning around, fabric twisting and turning. So merging all these knowledge that I know about how they will form shapes and I'm trying to shade it that way. Once I'm done with these three shades, I am actually adding a new highlight for the bottom part of the hair so it will look like there's a gradient going on with the hair getting lighter at the bottom. Okay, now you can see that I'm trying to sketch like lines right next to the outline. This will actually make the shape a bit stiffer like there's a thickness to it. So it's just a preference of style in terms of modeling. If you have been using this quick selections to paint, you will have a stiff outline connecting the forehead and the hair. So now we're going to fix that, disable any selections and then smudge the hairlines out to soften them. Then after that, use the sketch brush to sketch in some hair. You can also use the hairbrush to add more baby hairs around the fringe itself. Then after that, just smudge it out to soften it out. After I'm done with the hair, I decided that I need the entire portrait to pop so I'm changing the outline color to be a dark brown so I go to my line work area, make sure the alpha lock is selected and I'm just going to paint over all the lines and then of course I'll have to clean up some of the lines that are overlapping my background and finally I'm done with the artwork Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the final outcome for today's tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. It's especially detailed, right? So I'll see you next time. I'll try and make more tutorials but they really really take a long 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 time to edit. So I'll try my best but thank you so much for watching. Comment if you have any questions, like my video and subscribe to my channel. Bye!